Hi, this is Surya. Uh, I'll be presenting on behalf of the Soft Robotics team. Uh, the uh, project that we have been looking on is uh, simulations of electronics-free soft robotic circuits in MATLAB. Uh, let me get into the topic. Uh, so, as we all know that uh, rigid body uh, simulations are well known and understood and documented uh, as of now. Uh, but however, there is no uh, go-to tool for soft robotic simulations yet. Uh, so that's the main idea of our project uh, is to create is to create a soft robotics toolbox that will aid soft roboticists uh, to accelerate their uh, prototyping and idea generation phase. Uh, that's the kind of high level idea that we have been envisioning. Uh, but given the magnitude of uh, the problem at hand, in this project we have essentially implemented a useful soft robotics block called the soft ring oscillator in MATLAB and we have uh, uh, validated the uh, output from simulation and as well as with the experimental results. Uh, so let's get uh, deeper. Uh, as, as soft robotics is getting mainstream traction, there is a need to have a simulation, reliable simulation tool at hand. Uh, as for the past researchers that have been focusing on simulation of soft robotics, it's mainly focusing on uh, deformation properties and the material behavior. Uh, we all know that the go-to tool for uh, such analysis is uh, finite element methods, uh, which is very specific and time consuming. Uh, but the idea here is, uh, can we create an abstraction of soft robotics component uh, uh, and create a toolbox out of it where people can just drag and drop the components and assemble a circuit qu quickly and see its performance. Uh, more like uh, having resistors and capacitors in a toolbox, we just uh, grab and uh, make a circuit out of it and see the performance. So that's the idea that we have been uh, trying to see. And uh, once this uh, soft robotics uh, toolbox is available, it will inherently uh, help us to predict and optimize the performance of soft robots. Uh, so yeah, we have mainly tried to look at uh, uh, looking at making use of the existing components and building soft robotic components on top of it. Um, so that can be done, but uh, the may, there are two major challenges which uh, which will come which we will come ac come across. Uh, the first one is uh, as we all know, uh, Simscape uh, MATLAB Simscape has lots of components in it. Uh, in our case, we have mainly focused on the fluidic uh, side of Simscape because all the soft robots that have been pow uh, powered uh, are majorly on uh, fluids. Uh, so that's that's our, that's our area of interest. And most of the components that have been in uh, fluids Simscape have the inherent assumption that uh, the, they are rigid bodies and they cannot be deformed. So one of the primary uh, aspect of a soft robot is to have defo uh, deformable uh, uh, bodies and that essentially breaks the uh, first assumption. So there's a need to come uh, overcome this challenge. Uh, the, there could be two ways which we have there are two ways which we could address this challenge. First is either we could uh, build an analytical model of a soft robot from ground up and have the partial differential equations and build a component out of it. But uh, that's a huge step because uh, there are still currently ongoing researchers uh, in order to quantify, uh, uh, come up with an analytical model for a soft robot. Uh, so that's a difficult step to do. Uh, the second approach is that we have thought of is, can we use the existing uh, components that are available to us and uh, modify it a little bit so that we can get the performance of a soft robotic uh, component. So that's the approach that we have taken this, uh, this project. Uh, and the second main challenge is that there aren't much of uh, soft robotic components uh, available in Simscape. Uh, so we have tried to address these two challenges by implementing a block called soft ring oscillator, uh, which is a primary block that's being used in soft robotics. Uh, and then we have, uh, we, have a, we have relaxed the rigid body constraints of it. Uh, one might ask like, why did we choose soft ring oscillator as our uh, investigation? Um, uh, the reason is, Soft ring oscillators are uh, are the heart of the soft robotic uh, are the heart of soft robots. They essentially act as a CPU. Uh, I have a GIF here, but uh, so uh, what we have in the uh, GIF is that there is a 
soft robot which is being powered by a constant source of uh, air and there is a soft ring oscillator on board which detects the logic in which the air must be inflated and deflated into the different legs. So by doing that we could generate, we could make this robot walk in different directions. Uh, so what I'm, uh, what it says is that soft, uh, the soft ring oscillator is the one which is uh, handling the CPU, uh, which is handling the processing of this uh, soft robot. Once we have this soft ring oscillator in our MATLAB, essentially what we have created is a transistor equivalent uh, of a pneumatic, uh, of a soft pneumatic circuit. So uh, that's the main reason why we have chosen soft ring oscillator for our purpose. Uh, may, maybe if time permits, I'll show a video of, uh, of this ha happening in real time. So uh, let me go into a bit of details of uh, soft ring oscillator. Uh, soft ring oscillator can be made of many individual walls. Like I have shown here, there are three walls that are being connected uh, as shown in this figure. Uh, that, that There are two main uh, states of this wall. One is the on state when the membrane in between uh, is, is, it's like, I don't know. So it, it, it's like concave from uh, bottom and the on state is the one which is shown in the third wall from, uh, from this side. So th that is the uh, essential, that is the main thing that controls the on and off state of this uh, wall. That is in turn governed by the pressure that is present in the upper chamber. Uh, there are two parameters which dictates this uh, on and off of the membrane, which is called the snapback and snap through pressure. Uh, when the power supply is up, when the pressure source is applied, uh, essentially during charging phase, the upper chamber gets uh, fluid and it starts to increase in its pressure until a certain point called snap through pressure, which is when the membrane flips back and kinks the bottom uh, tube, which stops the airflow to the uh, upper chamber. And the pressure starts to uh, the pressure starts to drop in the upper chamber, and uh, the membrane again flips back to its original state. Uh, so that is on a high level how this uh, so soft walls are uh, working. Uh, below is the graph that we have uh, we have seen uh, is the pressure oscillation that we get when we have a three ring oscillator which is connected in this fashion. Uh, so the main goal was to uh, see if we can if we can make a circuit of this in a virtual, uh, in a simulink and get a pressure oscillation uh, like the ones we have in the experiment. Uh, so the modeling approach that we have took is uh, that of a lump parameter approach. Uh, we know that there are many uh, analogy, uh, analogy between the electrical and pneumatic circuits as depicted in the figure. Uh, the battery equivalent is, uh, is a pump and a switch can be modeled as a valve. And the capacitor can be modeled as a constant uh, uh, flu uh, constant volume chamber. Uh, however, although these components are present in Simscape, there is a uh, there is a problem which we will have to address uh, for a soft robotic application. For example, uh, let's take the case of a capacitor, which is a constant volume chamber. However, uh, since the volume of a constant uh, cylinder in a soft robot can be flexible and it can expand, we need to have a provision to do that. Uh, we have approximated that as a piston spring arrangement where the volume in the piston head can vary if a fluid is, uh, 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 is pumped into it, but that is coming at a cost of the compression of the spring, which is essentially to say that uh, when a valve is being filled up and it expands, uh, it, it is allowed to expand, but it will uh, it will have to uh, face the consequence of the restrictive force that is being offered by the flexible valve. So that's being modeled in this uh, piston spring arrangement. This is not a straightforward way, but this is the hypothesis that we have tried to test if this will approximate our uh, soft ring, uh, will this approximate our uh, soft component. Uh, so moving on. Uh, so the, what is going on here is an example of one particular valve uh, out of the three valves that I showed before, uh, where there is a okay, where there is a pressure constant pressure source which takes the uh, fluid from the reservoir and pumps into the subsystem. 
depending on the logic that is present in the subsystem, uh, the pressure is either applied across to the actuator or uh, the fluid from the actuator flows back to the exhaust. Uh, so the main subsystem is thought of as the uh, valve that we have showed in the previous uh, slides. And, uh, and, and I'll get into the uh, functioning of this subsystem. Uh, so I would like to draw the attention to three main uh, points in this uh, figure. One is the custom component, which is present in the top rightish corner. Uh, that is the one which is actually uh, modeling the behavior of the membrane flip that we saw in the uh, previous slides. Uh, uh, that we saw in the previous slides, and uh, depending on that, uh, the direction control valve is being flipped between two states. Uh, the direction control valve uh, models the uh, charging and discharging phase, and and yeah, so that's a custom component and direction control valve, and the tubes correspond to the resistance that is present in the circuit. Uh, so moving on, uh, once we had one component, we just had to place it in a sequence to, uh, and connect it as per the uh, a circuit that we have shown in the previous slides. Uh, this is this is the whole circuit for a three ring oscillator. And let me move on to uh, the results. So what we could see here, the left hand side is the one th that we got from the simulation output, and the right hand side is the one from uh, a paper in 2015 uh, by Whitesides group. Uh, we could see that uh, the trend is almost similar, uh, which is to say that there is an exponential rise and decay of the pressure. However, there are a few discrepancies like in the simulation, there is a, a, a saturation which is occurring in simulation, but that is not the case in uh, uh, experimental setup. The reason could be that uh, in, the, in the paper, they haven't mentioned all the initial conditions that they have used in the uh, experiment. Uh, whereas we need those to uh, uh, do a simulation. So what we did was we did our own uh, experiment, uh, which is to uh, conduct a, in which we made our own circuit and then we got the output, uh, which is shown in the left hand side. Uh, again, in this, we could see that the pattern is similar. However, there are some discrepancies like in valve two and three of the experiment, uh, we are not able to uh, see, see the pressure oscillation. Uh, whereas the right hand side is the uh, simulation one, which accurately shows what what's the ideal behavior of this wall should be. Uh, so given these, uh, we can conclude that uh, we have a baseline of the soft ring oscillator uh, in in MATLAB, which can be used in multiple ways. However, there are some discrepancies between what uh, uh, what, what the simulation says versus what the reality is. Uh, so the first work could be uh, could be to model this error and then uh, see if we can come up with a correction factor which could be applied across our simulation results. Uh, and the second thing would be once this valve is uh, accurate, we could uh, make different logics like I showed in the uh, first slides where uh, we created a walking robot and we could te test it out in our simulation instead of directly prototyping it and uh, uh, that will save our time. Uh, second, uh, third is can we look at an inverse model where given a desired output uh, pressure waveform and the pressure source come up with the optimal uh, uh, dimensions of the robot which will optimize the performance that we need. Uh, so that's a, so that's that those are the future works. Uh, so yeah, uh, I yeah I I had one slide. Uh, yeah, I would like to thank uh, Matlux and uh, UCSD Micro Grant for this project and. Um, uh, I would like to thank Professor Tolly and uh, Dylan, uh, Dr. Dylan, uh, to uh, who gave me guidance throughout this project, and all the uh, BRDL lab members. Um, uh, thank you, and um, please let me know if you have any questions.